God with us. God with us, encountering Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. All right, so this morning we're looking at Scripture. We're looking at Matthew chapter 4. Um, that's what we're doing this morning. But first we're going to pray. Ah, and I'm going to try not to tip over the camera. All right. So let's take a deep breath. Enter into the Trinity in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for this beautiful morning. Thank you for this opportunity for us to come together um, as a community. I believe that we are a community. I just ask that you would bless everyone who is with us live right now and who might watch later. Um, Father, I just ask that you send your spirit upon us, that we too might be led by the spirit, that we might be open to being led by you, that when we're called to fast, we fast, and when we're called to pray, we pray so that we might hear you, so that your voice might be the voice that we hear. Open our hearts, open our ears, open our eyes to what you would have for us as we dive into these scriptures. Bless our time today as we go about. Um, place people in our paths who we might be able to share your good news with. I just ask that you bless us and keep us safe. And we uh, give all glory to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, Matthew chapter 4. Um, I think the thing that, just remember that the scriptures were not divided into chapter and verse until much later, okay? So when I, when we start to read chapter 4, I think for me, I, I, I want to read the very end of, of chapter 3 again, you know? Um, where basically, you know, after Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water and behold, the heavens were opened for him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens saying, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and afterwards he was hungry. Reading that together, those, those just three verses together, helps us to see that what's coming next, you know, or this temptation by the devil was an attack on Jesus' identity, okay? Where else do we see that? We see that in the garden. We see that with Eve and Adam in the garden, right? It's an attack on Jesus' identity. So I think we can't just, you know, and, and he was led by the Spirit. When Jesus was baptized and the Spirit came upon him, that is that Spirit coming upon him is the identity with, with which he went about his ministry, Prior to that, he was, yes, he's still God, okay? But he, he went through everything that he went through to show us that he set a path for us. So all of the ministry that, that, was, that he was getting ready to walk into, that he was getting ready to partake in, comes through this spirit. So he was led by the spirit, right? But it's an attack on his identity. Um, you know, God had just said, this is my beloved son, and Jesus, we're not going to get into the temptations, okay, because the author spends basically the entire uh, entirety of chapter 4 really diving into that. So we're not going to talk about that. But, you know, God says, this is my beloved son. Jesus proves uh, his true sonship. He proves his true sonship in his obedience to the Father, okay, which completely rights the wrongs of Adam in the garden, okay? Jesus is the new Adam. But I think... That's what, it, you know, when you think about those temptations and then Jesus not wavering, okay, he rights the wrongs of Adam, you know? He redeems that. He redeems that disobedience with his obedience. And it's an attack on his identity. Don't, don't we still have our identity attacked by Satan today? I mean, we just spent an entire book talking about the lies of the enemy, okay? Satan is still trying to attack our identity. And, and this is where we have to really hunker down and, and be like, who am I in Christ? Who am I in this, in this family of God? Okay? His, his, his baptism did for him the same as our baptism does for us. Okay? We are, we are in the family of God. And we can walk in that identity. We just I, I just saw that as a great 
I don't know, that really hit me today and yesterday whenever I was reading that. You know, doesn't Satan try to tempt us the same way? Led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit into the desert. Are we led by the Spirit? If we find ourselves in the desert, do we look for the Spirit there? Do we look for the Spirit of God there? You know, there's a lot going on in the world today. You may feel like you're in the desert. Are you looking for the Spirit of God there? You know? Is what's happening in your desert the same as what happened to Jesus? Don't forget who you are, you know? And then I think, you know, at the very end of that, like I said, we're not going to get into those specific temptations because the author is really going to take us there tomorrow. But, you know, at the very end, if we look at chapter 10, um, at after they're bantering back and forth, and, and then Jesus says, get away, Satan. Get away, Satan. Can we not pray in the name of Jesus Christ? Get away, Satan. And then what happens? Then the devil left him. And behold, angels ministered to him. Came and ministered to him. Do you call upon angels to minister to you? You know, if we could see in that spiritual realm, we would see the hosts and powers of heaven are here. They're here. We just have to call upon them. There are ministering angels. These angels didn't stop working. They didn't stop their divine assignment with Jesus. They're, they're here to minister to us as well. And we can say, get away, Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ, get away, Satan. And Satan has to flee. If you're a Jesus calling person, look at December 3rd. Just look at December 3rd. I've called upon that, that day more, more than any other. Okay? He has to flee. Then we see that Jesus, you know, after that, and he's ministered to, you know, when we have time in the desert, we have to have some time to collect ourselves, okay? So the angels ministered to him, and then he begins his ministry. Um, he goes into Galilee. Um, that's where most of Jesus' ministry took place. Um, and it's got the reference here again to Isaiah, um, he connects that to the uh, the land of Zebulun and the land of Naph Naphtali um, so that the a prophecy from Isaiah could be fulfilled. It's, Matthew specifically tells us that. And then Jesus echoes John the Baptist. When Jesus begins to preach, he echoes that of John the Baptist. Repent. The only difference is John would have said the kingdom of heaven is near. Okay, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, but they're still calling upon that repent, repent, repent. Turn away from your sinful lifestyles. Turn away from that. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, I thought that was very interesting, just that, that the similarity there with his preaching with John, but the difference. John saying, you know, the kingdom of heaven is near, and Jesus is saying, you know, here it is. It's at hand. Uh Another thing that I want to touch on um, is the call of the first disciples. Okay, I have been in scripture studies. I'm aware that different faith, different denominations have different beliefs about whether or not Jesus had biological brothers or sisters. Because we see in scripture many times where Jesus will say brothers and sisters, okay? And, and it, it might even say that he has certain brothers, okay? Jesus was an only child, all right, to Mary and Joseph. Um, in the language for which it was written, there weren't as many words, okay? So, a brother or sister can be seen today like a very close friend, a relative, a cousin, all right? But we see here, it, it made me think about that because I've been in studies where I've actually had some interesting dialogue with people about Jesus's, um, whether or not Jesus had brothers and sisters. So when you see the call of his first disciples, he's walking by the Sea of Galilee. He sees two brothers. So we see Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. So Simon, or Peter and Andrew, are siblings, okay? They were fishermen. Then, so they follow him. And then you come along and there are two other brothers, which are the sons of Zebedee. Now, you can't be the son of Zebedee and the son of Joseph, right? So, those are James and John, okay? So, you know, 
while it may say brothers in other parts of scripture, you come back to where Jesus first, um, the call of his first disciples, and it clearly tells us that, that James and John were the brother, were the sons of Zebedee, okay? Um, I, I just want to clear, clear that up a little bit. Um, press in, if, if you uh, have been taught that Jesus had brothers or sisters, just pray for the spirit of truth to show you the spirit of truth to come upon you because none of us deserve to be, um, to be duped. Okay. We deserve to have authentic truth and the spirit of truth. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And I know that if you seek that with an open heart and an open mind, the spirit of truth will reveal it to you. All right. Um, ministering to a great multitude. Uh, he went around all of Galilee and what were the works that he was doing? What was Jesus doing? I mean, it clearly says exactly what he was doing. He was curing various diseases uh, and people racked with pain. Those who were possessed, lunatics, paralytics, he cured them all. And people began to follow them. So he's really beginning to, um, to get noticed, okay? Curing every disease. He proclaimed the gospel. Uh, he teached and he, and he taught. And here's something interesting that I read in my annotations. Um, that is indicative of the time that this gospel was actually written. Remember, um, the gospels were written. They were the the activities were done prior to this being written down. Okay, and and we we know that because um, if you see where it says, I believe it is in verse twenty three. He went around all of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. So in my annotations, it, it, it said that whenever he references their synagogues or when he's speaking to Jewish people, he would say your synagogues. Um, that indicates that it was written in a time after they, the Christians had already began to worship in a different place than what we would call like the home church. And then the Jews were still um, in their synagogues. So just that simple word right there gives us... Um, just some perspective on when this scripture was written down. It would have been after they had already sort of stopped um, doing everything together. Jesus and and Jesus was a faithful Jew, okay? But and so he was going into his synagogue at the time, but it was not written down until that separation had already taken place. So it would have been their synagogues. Just just interesting. Um, it's an indication that it was written after the break between church and synagogue. So, um, you know, we have to keep in mind that it wasn't like someone was following Jesus around with a, with a, I don't know, the book would have been huge and it would have been on animal skin. He wasn't writing it down or chiseling it out of rock as he's, as he's preaching and teaching. This would have all been committed to memory. It would have been stories that they told. Um, now, the scrolls and stuff, they, the Old Testament, they did have the scrolls written on papyrus or vellum, which would have been um, animal skin, but they weren't following Jesus around with an ink pen, you know, writing this stuff down. It would have been written down much later. So, anyway, those were the things that I just picked up on in the scriptures today. Tomorrow, we will get into chapter four in the book, okay? And then the next day, we'll get into uh, the Beatitudes, okay? So, for tomorrow, let's look at the book, chapter 4 in the book, and look at the questions at the end, and that's what we'll discuss. And then the next day, I believe it's chapters 5 through 7, so we'll have to look at that and decide what we're going to do for uh, Thursday. But for tomorrow, we'll be in the book, um, God With Us, chapter 4. Hope you have an amazing Tuesday. God bless you all. See you in the morning at 7 a.m.